In my last video, I discussed the difference between potting soil and potting media. In this video, I'd like to talk about potting media and whether or not you should go out and buy that product or make your own. Should you mix up your own potting media? I'll explain some reasons why you might want to do that. I'll explain what I do to grow my house plants, and then I'll discuss some specialty plants and how we should handle those. So there are three claim benefits for making your own potting media. One is cost. Two is that you're able to customize it just the way you want. And three is that you know what actually goes into your mix. Let's have a close look at each one of these. The first one is cost. Lots of people claim that making your own mix is less expensive than buying it. That's simply not true for most people. If you have to buy the ingredients that go into the mix, it's not any less expensive. In fact, it may be more expensive because you have to drive all over town trying to find these individual ingredients. The other issue you have is that the amount you have to buy is never quite right. So you got a lot of peat moss and a little bit of perlite and you start mixing it up, you run out of perlite. You gotta buy another bag of perlite because you still have some peat moss left. You also have bags of stuff sitting around. Now, there is one situation where it can be less expensive. If you have access to some free material, perhaps you have a compost pile out in the backyard and you're going to use that compost, then it makes sense to make your own because of the cost. So if you have access to some free stuff, consider making your own. Now, what about customizing? Well, the idea here is that you can make the mix whatever way you want so that it's perfect for the plants that you're trying to grow. And that's actually a valid claim. But there's one catch. How many of us actually know enough to make that perfect mix? Now, I've been growing orchids for 35 years, and I know how to grow orchids, and I know how to make an orchid mix. I have the knowledge to do that. But then a year ago, I started growing Streptocarpus. It's a new plant for me. I have no idea how to make a mix for it. I don't have the knowledge for that kind of plant. And quite honestly, I don't have the knowledge to make a mix for most house plants until I've been growing them for a number of years. And I'm going to guess that for most gardeners, you simply don't have the knowledge to customize that mix. Now you can go online and you can look up recipes and it's a good idea to do that. And one thing you'll find is that every recipe is different. All those experts out there who are writing about it aren't experts on those plants. And that's why every website has a different recipe for the same kind of plant. So unless you have some special knowledge, you really can't customize that media to be correct. The third benefit is that you have good knowledge about what actually goes into the mix. And that's a fair statement. I mean, you can go out and you can buy the perfect kind of sand and you know what kind of sand is in the mix. Whereas when I buy it already pre-packaged and mixed, I don't know what kind of sand that is. But again, you have to have the knowledge to do this. If I'm in the store and I see two different brands of perlite, I don't know which is better. I don't know how they're manufactured. I don't know what characteristics to look for. It's just perlite to me. I mean, I know some of it's smaller and some of it's larger. And I'm sure there's some better perlite and other perlite that's not so good. But I don't have the knowledge. So what that means is that I really can't control what goes into my mix. I just have to go and buy something. So there are three options here. You can go and buy the product already pre-made. You can buy the ingredients and mix your own. Or there's a third solution, and that's a hybrid solution. Now let's first look at mixing your own. I think that's a bad idea for most gardeners. But there are some special cases where it makes sense. If you have access to certain ingredients for free, make your own mix. You'll save some money. If you have specialized knowledge about a certain type of plant. Make your own mix, because you know what that plant needs. But if you have neither of those things, don't make your own mix. You're not gonna save money, it's a lot of trouble, and the chances of you coming up with a better mix than you can buy pre-made is pretty slight. So what I recommend is that you go out and find yourself a good quality pre-made product, a standard all-purpose potting mix. Now in North America, that generally is peat based and it has some perlite in there, maybe a little bit of sand and a little bit of fertilizer. But the main ingredient is peat moss. 
That becomes your base mix. And quite honestly, you can use it for 95% of your plants. Most house plants will grow just fine in that mix. You can start your seeds in that mix. Your seedlings can be grown in that mix until they're ready to go outside. It works for almost everything. If you want to grow some specialty plants, then you go with the hybrid formula. You start with that mix and you adjust it a little bit for those special plants. The problem with adjusting the mix is that you do need to have some more knowledge here. You have to know how these plants grow. Do they like it wetter, drier, more air? What kind of soil do they really like? You also have to start understanding your own environmental condition. Temperature and humidity play a big factor in getting the right mix. And you have to match the mix to your watering habit. If you like to water every day, you better have a more porous mix. If you tend to forget about the plants and don't water, you can have a mix that holds water longer. The environment is critical. The third piece of knowledge you have to know is what do all of these ingredients do? You have sand, perlite, vermiculite, pumice, little clay pellet, all kinds of things that you can put into your mix. What do each of these do to the mix? If you don't understand that, you better stay away from them. You're just going to make a mess. All right, let's look at some special cases. As I said, your base mix, the base product you buy, works for 95% of everything. But there are some special cases. Orchids are number one. Orchids don't use that base mix. Orchids need something special. I use coconut husks. The pieces have to be very large. You can't have a lot of peat moss in there. And I have a separate video to tell you how to pot up orchids. So orchids are completely different. Succulents and cactus, they like soil that drains really well. They like to be on the dry side. So for them, what we do is we take 50% of our base mix and 50% of sand or gravel, something that will help them drain. Now you can use perlite in there, but succulents seem to like that sand. So 50% base mix, 50% sand. That's your specialty cactus mix. Carnivorous plants like pitcher plants and sundews, they're also a little different. They like a really airy media around their roots, but they also like lots of moisture. So you can use straight sphagnum moss for those, but if you don't want to buy that, then use your base mix and 50% sand. And it turns out that mixture works just as well for the plants that like to be very moist and the cactus and succulents that like to be very dry. The difference is, for the cactus, you only water once in a long while, so they dry out. For these plants, you water a lot because you want that media to stay wet. The other group of plants that you might consider mixing something special are plants that like to be on the dry side. And this is particularly true if you tend to overwater, which I know most of you do that. So things like African violet, streptocarpus, the palms, the citrus trees, they like to be a little on the dry side. So we take our base mix and 20% perlite or sand. Mix that up and you've got a good mix for those. That will compensate a little bit for overwatering and make those plants happy. And that's just about it. Everything else just gets your basic mix. Don't make potting media so complicated. The trick to all of this is to buy a good potting media. And I'm going to help you do that in my next video. Have fun with your houseplants.